Hello again and welcome back to our course on Windows 8.1. In this section we're going to start to look at the Windows 8.1 interface. Now it's a bit of a difficult subject to cover in many ways because it's difficult to find a starting point. In Windows 8.1 you can start using the start screen as you've seen here or you can start straight into the desktop you can lock your screen, you can unlock, you can log in, you can log out. So it's very difficult to come up with a single consistent way of going through the sequence that you might want to follow. So what I'm going to do here is to start with the start screen and then gradually move into the other areas and show how you can smoothly move around Windows 8.1 whether you're using just the start screen or just the desktop or whether like me you tend to use each of them at different times. Now exactly what happens when you switch on a Windows 8.1 device will depend on various aspects of the setup, many of which we're going to look at during this section and later on in the course. But I'm going to assume for the moment that when you switched on you first of all saw a lock screen, which is basically just a screen normally with the date and time on it and you would normally tap or click on that screen that will give you access to a further screen where you type in a password now whether that's exactly what happened to you will as I say depend on this setup but if at any time you want to lock your device so you want to bring up that lock screen again and make it necessary for somebody to enter your password in order to continue using your session on the device and bear in mind what I just said about the fact that your PC may not be set up like that anyway if you click on your name, mine up here Toby A one of the options is lock and if I click on lock now, although you won't see it because of the way this is being recorded it will take me back to the lock screen and then if I clicked on the lock screen it would enable me to sign back in again and continue with my session. Now let me cover a very important point. Much of this course is going to be covered using mouse and keyboard. I'm actually recording it on a touch device but I don't want to do everything twice. I, don't, I think it would get a bit dull if I went through everything once using mouse and keyboard, once using touch. So generally speaking I'm going to use mouse and keyboard. When I say things like click, that will be click with a mouse, the equivalent will be tap with the touch device. So if you're following this course through on a tablet or something and you want to just follow all my actions, just when I say click you tap, double click, double tap and of course right click as normal you would tap and hold or touch and hold on the screen until the menu appeared or whatever it was that the right click was supposed to do. Now there are some very specific motions that you would use. I'm going to talk about some of those particularly during this section. For example, we just talked about locking the device, bringing up the lock screen. When you bring up the lock screen to clear it again, to go through to the screen where you enter your credentials, as I mentioned before with a mouse you just click with a mouse you could also press any key on the keyboard on the lock screen and that will automatically take you through to the login screen and with a touch device all you need to do is to touch the screen with your finger and then slide your finger up the glass most people do this as a sort of quick flick with their finger upwards now as we go through I'll try to point out any unusual kinds of touch gestures but generally speaking the standard ones the ones that you're probably already used to will apply if you're using a touch screen with Windows for the first time I'll try to put in enough of an explanation of those things as we go along to make sure that you can run through things smoothly some of the major annoyances that people have with Windows 8 were to do with making it just a little bit trickier to do even the simplest things. Windows 8.1 overcomes quite a few of these. For instance, if you want to shut down your PC, on the start screen here, just to the right of my name, you'll see a power options button. Click on that and there are the options to sleep, shut down or restart. The other symbol up here, the search magnifying glass, we're going to come back to a little bit later on. Now, still with the start screen, let's look at some of the other options on the start screen in terms of navigating our way around it. If you go to the top right corner with the mouse or the bottom right corner with the mouse, what you'll see is the charms bar moving out. 
into view. If you go to the top left hand corner you'll see a thumbnail of the last application that you ran. So in this case that's a desktop application, it's Adobe Photoshop Elements. If I click on that it takes me back into Photoshop Elements and then to go back to the Windows Start screen number of ways of doing it, one of them is just to click on the Start button at the bottom there. And I'm back into the Windows Start screen. Let's now look at some of the ways of finding our way around using touch. For instance, if I want to see the charms bar, all I need to do is to slide my finger in from the right and the charms bar appears. Note also a date and time display there as well. If I slide my finger in from the left, it will actually bring in the last app that I was running. So let's try that. I'm now in that app and I can carry on using Photoshop Elements as I was before. And one way of closing this app is to drag with my finger down from the top. You'll see the app start to get smaller and eventually it will disappear as it closes. And again, I'm back at the start screen and I can use a similar approach to close any of the other open apps as well. Now it's a good idea to experiment with all of these options whether you are using mouse and keyboard, whether you've got a touch device or not, just become familiar with these options. You'll soon find the combination that suits you the best. Now just let me mention one other important point here. I'm largely talking about mouse and keyboard options which are very often mouse options. In the case of for example seeing the charms bar, the mouse option is to put the mouse in the top right or bottom right corners and the charms bar appears. There is a keyboard shortcut if you hold the Windows key on your keyboard and press the C that brings out the charms bar as well and of course from the charms bar you get to things like settings that will take you into the settings for your device and there you have options such as connecting to a wireless network you have power options, notification options and then options to personalize etc the sort of options you're familiar with already with Windows 8 and one other thing not to forget, on your start screen you almost certainly have a desktop tile. If you click on the desktop tile that will of course take you back to the desktop. To go back to the start screen you can obviously use the Windows button on the keyboard or of course you can use the restored start button as I pointed out before though the start button only takes you to the start screen it doesn't give you the list of installed programs that you used to get in earlier versions of Windows such as Windows 7. Now what we've looked at so far is finding a way around the start screen and we've looked at switching to the desktop and looking at running desktop applications and how to get back to the start screen again. Let's look now at running Windows 8 apps themselves and switching between those. What I'm going to do is to run a couple of these. I'm going to run the Weather app and the Photos app and the Money app. I'm going to get those three running. Join me again when they're running. Now that those three are running, if I put the mouse pointer up into the top left corner you can see the desktop but you can also see three sort of parts of frames beneath it and if I move the mouse down to those frames I'll see those three Windows apps there available to me and I can click on the one that I want to run so if I want to go back into money click there it takes me back into money and again up into the top left hand corner click scroll down if I want to go to weather takes me into the weather app. So that's another useful way of switching between Windows apps. So let me just show you a slightly extended version of that. If I swipe in with my finger from the left now, you saw this happen before, there's my last desktop application appearing. But let me just carry on dragging it over to the right. Watch what happens. On the left I get that complete list. I've got that desktop app and I've got my three Windows 8.1 apps sitting there and I can choose whichever of those I want to run. So we've already seen a number of ways of switching between apps and desktop applications or programs 
and between the start screen and the desktop themselves. There are some other options, there's actually quite a few other options, but I just want to look now at a couple of keyboard options that people find useful. If you've used earlier versions of Windows, you'll be familiar with switching between applications, desktop programs using Alt-Tab. There is an equivalent in Windows 8.1, which is to hold down the Windows key and press Tab, and that brings up that list that you saw just now. If you press tab again, it will step you through the available apps. Now let me just release the Windows key on Money, and of course the Money app opens up. Now when you see that list of apps on the left, one of the things that you can do from there is to close any one of the apps. If I right click on Photos, one of the options is to close. Let's click on close. That app's now closed. If, on the other hand, on money, I right click on that, and not close, I could say replace weather and it would replace the weather app. Don't forget, Windows apps generally are full screen apps. You can't resize them, but you can look at them, for instance, side by side. So if I clicked on insert left here, I could have both of those apps open at once. And at the point that I want to close one of them, I can, for instance, scroll up there and I can close, or I can minimize. So I could minimize money. And then on the Weather app, if I click here, I can make that a full screen app again. So you've already seen a few ways of closing apps. You can, in fact, close apps from the desktop. If you look at the taskbar here, for example, along the bottom, you can see some apps listed, including there the Weather app. I hover over that. If I right-click, click on Close Window, that app is now closed. So in this section, we've looked at the Windows 8.1 Start screen, how to find our way around Windows 8.1 into the desktop, back to the Start screen again, how to close and open apps and programs. And in the next section, we're going to continue on this theme. We're going to look in particular first at how to find the app or program that you want to run. And we're also going to look at some of the features that help us to make the start screen and desktop work more closely together, but also at how to just use one or the other if that's what you want to do. So that's the end of this section. Please join me in the next one. If this is your first time here, click on the subscribe button to get similar videos every week. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, new videos are uploaded to our YouTube channel. If you want to see similar videos, click on the links under Check Out These Tutorials by Simon Says It.